Welcome to Par Podcast, episode 77.43. Par Podcast is an audio supplement for Public Administration Review, the premier professional journal in the field of public administration. This year, 2017, inaugurates Par's 77th year furthering public administration research, theory, and practice. This episode features comments by Jim Perry, who is the editor in chief of Public Administration Review and a distinguished professor in the School of Public and Environmental Affairs at Indiana University in Bloomington. Professor Perry discusses his article titled, Public Service Motivation Research, Lessons for Practice. Co-authors on this article include Rob Christensen from Brigham Young University's Marriott School of Management and Lori Parlberg from the Bush School of Government and Public Service at Texas A&M University. The authors would like to recognize the able assistance of Amelia Brown and Breck Wickham in helping draft the initial script for this podcast. This article can be found in Public Administration Review, Volume 77, Issue 4. An age-old question regarding public administration is, how do we motivate employees who are doing the public's business? Traditional motivational systems in the public sector have largely been adapted from the private sector. Yet in general, private sector management has not always yielded benefits for performance in the public sector. For example, recent studies suggest that the use of pay for performance as a motivational system has a negative effect on employee motivation in the public sector. As a result of this and similar differences, public administration scholars have sought to uncover the science behind public service motivation, and research on the topic has expanded quite dramatically in the last decade. The volume of the research on the topic was ultimately the stimulus for this article. The time has come to think about how to translate the research into practice. We wanted to synthesize the research to focus more specifically on translating the research into practical applications for managers. We strategically gathered peer-reviewed articles published between January 2008 and December 2015 that utilized a combination of theory-based and measurement and methods-based research. From there, we coded the findings and focused on their practical applications. With this focus, we synthesized five lessons from the research. The first and most frequently voiced practical implication in recent research is that attracting and selecting employees with high public service motivation is a reliable way to capture the benefits of public service motivation enhancing both employee performance and agency mission accomplishment. Although the research is less concrete about steps public organizations can take to realize the goal, we extracted at least three steps from the research. First, project clear images of the organization's mission and values to attract high public service motivation staff. Second, take steps to screen in candidates with high public service motivation. And third, take steps to screen out candidates with motivations that are likely to crowd out intrinsic or pro-social orientations. The second practical implication involves the work environment and employees that employees confront once they join an organization. Managers should create a supportive work environment that models and reinforces public service motivation by implementing interventions that enhance public service motivation and avoiding practices that may crowd it out. We found that organizations that intentionally nurture public service motivation develop stronger ties between the organization and employee values and goals. The third practical implication involves the work that employees are engaged in, 
particularly how it impacts beneficiaries. Managers should identify beneficiaries of specific jobs, programs, and organizational missions, creating opportunities for direct contacts between employees and beneficiaries, and provide clear channels for beneficiary feedback. In support of this effort, managers should design work that allows for direct contact between employees and beneficiaries. The fourth practical implication is to provide opportunities for newcomers to learn public service values. This could involve providing formal and informal opportunities for newcomers to learn about organizational values and expectations for employee behavior that reflect public service values. Implementing onboarding and orientation initiatives and encouraging mentoring. The final lesson we gleaned from the research is develop leaders who communicate and model public service values. This can most easily be accomplished by promoting the organizational mission and vision. This means managers need to articulate the mission and vision at the beginning of the employment, continue to promote the mission and vision throughout employment, and also have a passion for promoting value-based leadership, helping the employee understand how their work relates to the overall mission of the organization. The five lessons presented in the article provide a foundation for bringing public service motivation more fully into the motivational paradigms used in public organizations. Although specific paths to practical implication need to be fleshed out further, the five lessons provide steps in clarifying implementation for practice. To make the paths to practical application of the research clearer, scholars and practitioners should cooperate on field experiments to assess key facets of the public service motivation paradigm. Practitioners in need of evidence related to recruitment, leadership reward structures, or a host of other important information could provide the arena and problem statements. Scholars could bring their expertise, time, and other resources to serve the needs of practitioners. This concludes PAR Podcast, Episode 77.43. To listen to additional episodes and learn more about Public Administration Review, please visit us online at publicadministrationreview.org. You can also find us on Facebook and Twitter at PA Review. Thanks for listening.